So how many people took the M section of 205, M version of 205 last semester? Okay, almost everybody, okay. Uh, you'll find that this is a continuation of that approach. It's the second volume of the textbook. And once again, where the highlights of the M section are a focus on microscopic properties of matter rather than just treating large scale objects, we're also going to be looking at uh, the micro world and making connections to the mi macro world. And the big uh, new concept in 205 in terms of that is looking at the uh, microscopic properties of conductors and insulators and specifically how electrons behave uh, at the microscopic level. Um, the other big push, as some of you should know, from 205M in this course is an emphasis on fundamental principles. Which take a slightly different look in this course because we're going to be dealing with uh, a new concept called the field concept, electric and magnetic field. And so our fundamental principles are going to be how charges, and sort of if you want to think about rather, rather than fundamental principles, the fundamental idea is how electric charges create fields, electric and magnetic fields. So we can say charges create fields. And then fields, in turn, affect other electric charges in space, OK? So the fundamental principles and the fundamental ideas or concepts in this course are really going to be focused on this idea in, in various incarnations, OK? But if you get in, into your head the idea that charges make fields and fields affect other charges, that's really the course in a nutshell, OK? And it's just expanding on that idea over and over again. Uh, as with the M version of 205, there's going to be also a emphasis on computational modeling. Okay, so once again, if you again if you took the M version, we're going to be using VPython in the labs. Not exclusively; it's not the only thing you'll be doing, but you will be doing some. Uh, problems, you'll be doing some experiments, but you'll also be doing some computational modeling occasionally in the labs. The, uh, again, if you're new to the M version of the course, the idea behind why we're introducing computation in a, in a physics course is that there really is no escape from computation in modern science and engineering, okay? Uh, modern careers in science and engineering, you're going to be doing theory, you're going to be doing experiment, and you're going to be doing computational modeling meaning we can actually use fundamental principles in a algorithmic or procedural way applied to the computer to tackle problems that might be very difficult to handle otherwise with just ordinary math, uh, algebra and calculus, okay? The other nice thing about computational modeling in this course is that we're going to be dealing a lot with, again, as I said, the field concept, which is an inherently 3D uh, phenomenon. And so visualization becomes extremely important. Visualizing the patterns of electric and magnetic fields in space. And as you might know, vPython, which is uh, a version or a modification of the Python language, allows you to produce uh, 3D graphics for free, basically. Okay. And so visualizing in 3D becomes extremely important. And vPython is a tool that allows us to do that fairly easily. So if you're new to vPython, uh, you can actually go to vPython.org, download it to your own computer. It's freeware, open source, and we'll be playing around with it in lab. If you are new to the M version of the course and you've never seen vPython before, don't worry because we will pretty much review all you need to know or give everybody what they need to know in terms of uh, vPython in the labs. We'll be, we'll be assuming you're starting from scratch and we'll get you up to speed in, you know, one or two labs. Okay, so if you've never used this before or never written a program before, don't worry, we'll, we'll teach you what you need to know. Okay? Questions? So, so that's just sort of specifics on the M version of this course. I want to say something about what the second semester of this course is about. 
And we're going to be focused on, as the name of the book implies, electric and magnetic interactions. And the question might be, why would we devote an entire course to electricity and magnetism? And the answer basically is because electricity and magnetism is extremely important, okay? Uh, quick review. There are four fundamental physical interactions, or four fundamental forces. which basically govern the behavior of everything in the universe. And they are what? Okay, we have gravity. What was it? Okay, strong and weak, right? There's a strong interaction or a strong force. There's a weak interaction. And then there is electromagnetic interaction. When is gravity important? When do we need to worry about gravity? Okay, mass, right? Gravity pertains to mass. And in particular, you need a lot of mass to notice gravity, right? The gravitational interaction will occur between anything, any two objects that have mass. But if you're dealing with small masses, like at the atomic scale, electrons, protons, the masses are so small that gravitation really doesn't matter that much, right? It, it takes the entire mass of the Earth to cause this marker to accelerate downward, right? So it takes large masses to notice gravity. Strong force is important where? The nucleus, yeah. So this is the force that holds the nucleus together, and it also pertains to the objects that make up the nucleus, protons and, and neutrons, these are the, this is the interaction that holds the quarks that makes protons and, uh, make up protons and neutrons, okay, that holds the quarks together. So it's important, without it we wouldn't have atomic nuclei and we wouldn't have atoms, but it's extremely short range, right? It only is important at the nuclear level. Similar with the weak force, it's very short range. It has to do with certain types of radioactive decay. So we have gravity, big masses, and also big ra large ranges, right, large distances. Strong and weak are noticeable, but only at short distances, but electromagnetism is pretty much important everywhere. It governs the behavior of so much. It's important at the microscopic scale. It's the electric forces that basically hold uh, electrons to nuclei and bound, bind atoms together into molecules. Uh, but it's also important at macroscopic scales. We'll actually see in the lab and in lecture demos examples of electric, um, uh, electric interactions, okay? It's important for the modern world, right? Pretty much our entire technological society is based on the electromagnetic interaction from electric power, computers, okay, uh, semiconductor devices, uh, just about Every technological device we have these days is based on the electromagnetic interaction. 